So today on LRSU, we have a rare opportunity to check out some impressive equipment and a very cool new silencer company. Uh, we've got Todd McGee from Dead Air Armament with us. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit what they have to offer and the background of Dead Air Armament and take a look at some really sexy rifles here. So Todd, uh, why don't you start out by just telling us a little about yourself. Sure. So uh, background with uh, Silencer Co., one of the original uh, investors and designers there in the company and uh, moved on to uh, Dead Air uh, with Mike Pappas and uh, really further than that going back uh, I've been in the medical device industry carried a lot of what I knew there in the silencer world a lot of materials and processes and things like that and I'm set out to, to make a better silencer. Very good and what what is the goal of Dead Air? I mean are you trying to make a sexier suppressor? Because I know your marketing is, is attractive, it's cool. I mean, the, the logo, everything, I think really catches people's eye. It's very different. Um, is that the goal? Is it to make a quieter can? Is it to make a more precision-oriented can? An AR can, a military can? What, what is the goal? Sure, so uh, first and foremost, we wanted a shooter-centric experience where we wanted cans that really are great for the shooter. Uh, so we set out to really optimize a can so that it has less blowback to the shooter, less sound reflected back, uh, especially on the AR platform. It's a really loud platform, so we set out to drop that amount of back pressure uh, while balancing the, the muzzle report as well. Uh, we also wanted to make something that uh, really was very usable for the average shooter. So. Uh, when they want to put it on, it goes on easily. When they want it to come off, it comes off. When they don't want it to come off, it stays on. So uh, we also wanted to create something that was extremely durable. Uh, so just to give you some background on it, uh, this is the, the Sandman long version. We also have a Sandman short. And this uh, mount system is super easy. The key mount, it just drops on. You turn it, it locks on. If you want to take it off, it turns. It comes right off. Uh, so in that regard, we're, uh, we feel like we have the best mount on the market. It's super repeatable. Every time you put the can on, it's going to go exactly the same spot, which is another end uh, design control that we, that we have. Is we got to have a can that when you shoot, it's still accurate. So uh, the, the baffle stack is meant to be a type of baffle stack that's not going to create a lot of back pressure for the shooter. And also with that, it means it's not going to create really wicked cross jets inside the can so it's not going to affect bullet flight as much so your precision stays nice and tight as well so uh, we've had really good success with putting a heavy tactical can on a precision long range rifle and having great repeatability from taking it on and off and keeping the precision of the rifle as well okay and does this it obviously has a, a quick detach but what about a direct thread do you offer a direct thread on this one or is it yes. just a quick detach yep we do i don't have one right here but uh, it's titanium tubed uh stellite baffle stack uh, so it's still, it's still extremely durable. Uh, it's uh, the type of can that if you need to shoot full auto, you can do it. Uh, if you want to have something that's still lightweight, uh, that is incredible for bolt action, long range rifle, it's ideal. So, so either the quick detach or the direct thread, you've seen great repeatability out of it. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you said there's a long and a short. So what are the, the weights and lengths of the different cans? Sure. So the short is coming in at uh, about... Uh, 18 ounces so here's the short here uh, this one is meant to be really it's a 308 can but it's meant to kill any 556 can that anybody would ever want to buy because this is the same size and form factor and even lighter than most 556 cans in the 308 realm it's really a shorty um, it's really small for a 308 can but it still does a great job of suppression um, and then the, the long uh, we're looking at uh, Man, I should know this. 22 ounces, basically. 21 point something, 22 ounces. Uh, the uh, the length of the can is 8.9 inches. Usually, people are over 9 inches. Getting into a full size rifle can, so we wanted to bring that down and uh, get a little bit shorter can. It sits further back on the mount as well, so your overall added length is a little shorter. Uh, the short can here is 6.8 inches. Uh, so. Uh, you know, when you look at that, that's super short mm -hmm. for a 308 can. Uh, the added length to the overall rifle is only about four and a half inches. It looks so. good. Now, tell me a little bit about the uh, the end cap here. Now, is that something that you can swap out? I mean, if I'm running a 308 can on my AR-15 223, can I swap out that cap and do a 556 cap? Yes, you can. And get uh, better closure. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Uh, and 
to be honest, I recommend doing that over bolt action. For an AR-15, it's going to increase back pressure. Okay. So a lot of manufacturers won't tell you this, but what it actually does is, is it'll reduce the muzzle report, but in turn it keeps more pressure in the inside the can so that when the bolt unlocks, there's a little more pressure coming back at you. Come back in your and face. So most mm -hmm. people that are shooting with uh, earplugs, you probably won't notice the difference. It still is a nice shooting experience. And, uh, and we still want to sell front caps for people. And, but we went into this knowing that the front cap is the thing that typically gets hit. And so for the user experience, uh, you know, they, they can have something they don't necessarily have to send back to the manufacturer. Uh, they can have something they can easily replace if something bad happens. Very good. Now I noticed that the, the design on the end of here, the, the hole in the end, is, is unique. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Can you show an yeah. example here? This is actually uh, one we didn't show. Okay. That's, I forgot. That's, that's one of the That's versions. the <laughs> prototype. Okay. So it's not a normal, typical circle. You've got kind of a triangular design there. Tell us about that. Uh, we were just looking for something that would that would help uh, gradually vent, almost like a good muzzle brake on there. A little bit of it is just for visual aesthetics. Uh, it also ties into the flash hider front cap that we're putting out that has uh, the tines built into it. It has those pre-vents that go in there. So uh, it, it's a common visual uh, detail that, that uh, travels throughout the product line. Okay. As well as it's a functional detail as well for flash suppression with the flash hiding or uh, front front cap. Now I can't help but notice these little bags. I mean, it seems like everybody has a different way of packaging their can or or whatever. But uh, this is kind of cute. I recognize these guys. These are this is they make race yes jumpsuits, right? So yeah, the flame retardant exactly. race jumpsuits, correct? Yeah. How many times have we gone to take off the can and you're looking around trying to find something to grab it with? Uh, that you don't want to scorch and these are great for that uh, if you have a really hot can you want to throw in your bag that you're a little worried it might melt something mm -hmm. throw it in the bag it's going to be safe i spent a lot of time walking around waiting for the thing to cool off just to put it in the bag and go home yeah i try to use that excuse of my wife but it doesn't always work so good <laughs> so it took so long yeah i had to wait for the can to cool honey so uh, all right and uh oh, what else do you want to show us here well we have our uh, mask HD, which is uh, stands for heavy duty. This is our 22 product that's just released, and this is a very small form factor, uh, super heavy duty suppressor for 22 through uh, 22 rimfire through 5.7. So it can handle very high pressures, nonetheless. Uh, so a, a, like like under the Sparrow. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, in fact. As it turns out, very, very similar form factor to the Sparrow. Okay. Uh, the one thing that, that we do have is uh, very minimal first round pop. Uh, and uh, overall, on average, very great suppression numbers. So, uh, and it's one of those cans that transfers through from pistol to rifle. Some cans work really great on a rifle, like a Prodigy. It works really great on a rifle. Uh, you know, maybe something like a uh, 22 Sparrow or an Element work really well on a pistol can. Uh, most of the time when we meter this, it's almost identical. It's within one or two dB between rifle to, to, to pistol. Wow, so it's that's a, impressive. it's a great all-around can. Uh, so titanium tube with 17.4 stainless steel internals. Uh, so if you need to, you take it apart, throw the baffles right into something caustic like uh, uh, the dip, well, technically acidic, like like the, the the dip as it's called, um, into ultrasonic bass, uh, pin tumblers, whatever you want to do to clean it. Incredibly easy. The baffle stack is a compressed K style baffle stack that uh, it actually has a cone on a cone with the cross band like a normal K baffle has, if that makes sense. Hmm. So, uh, but uh, so I did a departure away from the normal uh, uh, monolithic baffle stack to get away from the first round pop. Uh, but still make something that's fully encapsulated. And uh, on top of that, what you have is a baffle stack that has little standoffs on it, so it minimally contacts the inside of the tube, because you typically still have leakage of the carbon and whatever that, that comes out. Um, and what you get in that really tight interstitial space between the, the core that's all built up and the tube 
is that fluid can quickly get in there and whatever material's in there, it'll seal it up. This just barely contacts all that so that when it comes time to break it free, it pops loose very easily. Then so the, the idea of the Sparrow was that it'll come apart and allow you the same thing, the ability to clean it, which at 22 is, that's the tricky parts that get very dirty very fast. So this is just giving you a little bit of space in between where it'll pop free easier. Yeah, between the tube and the sealed stack and then the sealed stack itself, the baffles are made to just minimally contact each other so that they can easily break free and come apart. So uh, still keeping along that shooter-centric experience that not only does it got to sound great, but you've got to be able to clean it and maintain it. Especially the 22s for sure. Exactly. And is this a direct thread, I assume? Yes, it is. Direct thread. Uh, the fun thing about it, uh, you can put this on something like a uh, 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 standard 0.6 inch long thread, uh, like an M&P. 15, 22, uh, that it'll thread right on that. You don't need a spacer. Gotcha. So that's a typical issue that people need spacers when they throw these on, on longer threads. This will thread straight on it. I still recommend getting it just so you maintain a good, a good blast chamber on it, but it's not a requirement. Hmm. Very cool. A little more versatile. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Let me take a look at that. I'm going to sure. pull it up here and show people up close. You said this one's called the Mask, correct? Correct. Mask HD, and we'll be coming out with a Mask Micro, which will be about an inch shorter than that, but still maintain really great sound reduction. Very cool. That same pattern on the end there. Very cool stuff. Okay. Well, what else? Uh, what else do we need to know about these? I mean, maybe there's some common questions that uh, a typical guy has that's looking to get into a can. I mean. What are the what are common questions that, that people typically have? I mean, how are these hearings safe? Are they legal? Are they, I mean, what kind of questions can do you, do you get a lot that we can answer for the viewers? Sure. The most common one lately is is a hearing safe, like you said. Um, uh, for the shooter, it's funny. It's often very different than what is metered or what is uh, published in marketing as metered out left of the muzzle. And uh, in that regard, we really excel. We're always uh, quieter than the competition so far in all of our testing. So we've done a great job there. Uh, a lot of times, just how long will it last? Uh, our baffles on the rifle line are made out of Stellite, which is a cobalt alloy. So it's made to just really last a long time. And all of our endurance testing, uh, compared to other materials, even Inconel, uh, we see very, very little erosion to, compared to others that are extremely eroded out. And that it's not just material, it's geometry as well. Uh, by the time you get a baffle that's, that's a really sharp coned baffle uh, made out of maybe titanium, for example, when it erodes, it's like a sharp knife edge. It's very quickly going to erode away and it's going to open up the bore. Uh, our baffle is, 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 is more blunt on the front, um, so it's made to really see a lot of abuse as well as uh, the material itself that keeps that erosion. To You're talking about materials I've never even heard of, my friend. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> this is getting really space age really fast. I just shoot guns. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, uh, anything else that we can cover here before... Uh, I don't know, can you, let's, why don't we show uh, some of the, uh, the attachment points for sure. the brakes. Yeah, so right now, uh, all I have with me are the brakes. Flash hiders are being machined right now, so we're still in the process of getting that done. And maybe you can explain what's the difference between a flash hider and a, and a muzzle brake sure. as far as an attachment goes. Yeah, um, so our mount is actually built with the attachment on here. That's the mount portion, and then the flash hider will actually have faces on here that can help break and minimize the, the movement of the rifle, helps counteract the recoil. And a, a flash hider will typically have times, times to break up the, uh, the flash and to keep that optimal fuel air mixture from occurring. And uh, one really fun thing about a flash hider is it has very minimal flash because it has forward firing vents on it that break up and disrupt the flow across the, the faces of, of the flash. Uh, or of the uh, the brake chambers and so in that regard if you have a really flashy ammo um, it's going to break that up so you don't get the giant fireball in the evening hmm. or at night so uh, this, cool. the yeah, way this the way the brake is designed is it has channels that travel down and the silencer is made so that it has lugs that travel down that and swing into pockets and allow the can to be tightened and lock on and that's all it takes very nice
Lots of jealous people sitting at home on their couch looking at this stuff. Another thing a lot of people don't think to ask about or that other manufacturers just don't want to let people know about is that you want to keep your attachment points behind the taper and a lot of brands may have just a really small taper or may just have threads but the taper helps seal off a lot of the gases so in this brake it hasn't seen a lot of use but you can tell that there is some carbon on it uh, a lot of carbon up here really by the time you make it back here no carbon so one thing is is that uh, that carbon is what locks it on in a lot of cases so if you have contact points out here on the distal end of the of the the, the mount then you're going to get carbon built up in there and eventually when you go to take it off it's not going to want to come off so a lot of times you need to get solvents in there sometimes you have to loosen the attachment features and shoot it off um, there are things like that, that that occur so ours is made so the contact point and the alignment point is on this taper where the seal occurs and uh, and then behind it so that the carbon fouling doesn't get into that area. Hmm. You know, one thing I hear people say all the time is, holy cow, these are a thousand bucks? Like you're paying a thousand dollars for a can? I mean, isn't it just a tube with brakes in it or, you know, like washers in it? You can obviously see there's an incredible amount of thought that goes into these, the technology, the materials. I mean, this is really cutting edge stuff. I mean, it's a very competitive market. And Lots of thought goes into these things. Agreed. Thank you. So that's that's incredible. You're getting an awesome product that's going to last a long time and work really well for you. You'd be happy with it. Agreed. And that's really what, what we're all about, the precision uh, world. So awesome. Well, thank you so much, sir. This has been a real pleasure. All right. Thank you. Uh, awesome to meet you. Uh, this is just a beautiful sight. So one thing that a lot of precision shooters want to know about or should know about is what affects the, uh, the precision of their rifle. And with a suppressor, on the end a key thing is mass so if you have extra mass out there on the end of the barrel it's going to want to control the harmonics of the barrel which is going to control where the bullet ends up and since it's always in the same place and it's the same mass it should be repeatable every time but one thing that you see is there are some mounts that are a little loose or are not necessarily super rock solid and so they're not always necessarily in exactly the same position or the same the same place every time and uh, that that will affect your long range accuracy um, so the other thing that will happen is the baffle stack if you have uh, the type of baffle stack that's really aggressive uh, what will happen is every single time it goes through a baffle there's a cross jet and it will begin to throw a bullet and by the time it leaves the barrel it's gonna in its flight it's gonna want to travel a little bit different uh, than, than it was without the can on. And that's usually very repeatable though, so you can plan for it. The real issue comes in when you have a mount that's not super, super tight and, uh, and the uh, silencer is able to move a little bit between shots. I can attest to that personally. Uh, in the 22 matches that we shoot every month, a lot of guys run you know, suppressed 22s. And there is one particular course of fire, one particular stage that they do where uh, you cannot have a suppressor, you have to take it off. And those guys, a lot of them will take and put a weight on the end of the barrel to try to compensate for the difference uh, that you're getting when you're losing that. And also, a lot of guys run direct thread with the long range game just for that same reason. You want to have make sure it's absolutely tight every time. And so I think a lot of them are reluctant to go with a, a mount just for that reason. So, Agreed. very, very cool stuff, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, look forward to testing some of these out. Great, let's go shoot. <laughs> This is a uh, Ruger Mark II. It's pretty uh, beat up, but it still shoots. This is a uh, Dead Air Mask 22 long rifle silencer, uh, titanium tube, and stainless steel baffle stack. It's all serviceable and everything. Let's see what it sounds like. Quiet! <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Pretty fun. Let's throw the sparrow on there and see how that sounds. Okay. A little comparison. This is the same Ruger Mark II. Um, this time with the sounds for Coda Sparrow. Uh, stainless steel everything except for the outer tube of the aluminum and the backs of aluminum too, the nut. Here we go. Oh, there, close the bolt. Huh?
You know what I noticed? He talked about in the interview that the, the first shot, there's a pop, mm -hmm. and then every shot after that, it's not. Yeah. The dead air didn't do it. Yeah. That's interesting. So it backs up uh, the claim. I almost want to do it a couple rounds again just to see if it yeah. if it really does it. Because I noticed it for I sure believe, on that. It I popped. believe I'm not any engineer. I believe that's the oxygen inside the suppressor igniting, hmm. and then after that first one, there's no more oxygen, so it doesn't ignite that oxygen. So. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. For some reason, he said that theirs designed not to do it. Tell us first of all what you're shooting there. All right, we've got a 300 blackout on a 11 inch Nevesky upper, uh, full auto lower, and we've got a Sandman long on here. Beautiful. So, let's go semi auto first. In the dark. <laughs> Hit something out there. All okay. right, whoever's ready. Safe. All right. If you have to. I'll close my pocket. That's pretty sweet. It's that same color, huh? Yep. Toasty? A little bit. Subs, not, not too bad. Yeah. Look like there's like stars out there. I can't see them. <laughs> that is cool. Bring it in close, Jim. Recognize that rail. Handguard. Mm -hmm. Pretty sweet.